Our next guest is a third generation Montana farmer and a former school teacher. He also served as the Montana Senate president. An avid outdoorsman, he's a supporter of efforts to provide quality health care for veterans regardless of where they live. He also understands the challenges of running a small business, having done so at a custom butcher shop. In fact, he still butchers his own meat and regularly hauls it to D.C. in a carry-on suitcase. <laughs> what can you say? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the ranking member of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, Senator John Tester of Montana. Thank you very much. Hello, Senator. Thank you. Hey, Thank you very hey, much. Appreciate you being here with us. Thank I you very appreciate much. you having me. Thank you very much. Thank you all very, very much. It is true. I do pack my own beef to Washington, D.C. It's not that I don't trust the grocery store, it's just I like mine better. I like to know where it comes from, what it looked like when it was alive. At any rate, I want to thank you all, and I want to thank the Allegiant for inviting me to say a few words today. I'm honored to be here with you. I want to uh, acknowledge some Montana Legionnaires, Kelly Ackerman, William White, Lois Schmidt, Roger Hagan for making the jaunt from Montana. It's, I saw them a little bit earlier, and I think they're in the back of the room somewhere. It's good to see you folks. Merv Gunderson, who I know you all know, is uh, still on the mend, and our thoughts are with him this morning. It was also good to see Secretary Shulkin outside the door, and I'm glad he took the time to visit with you this morning. As I told him when he was nominated, I believe he's the right person for the job at the moment. Uh, he has an enormous task ahead of him. Uh, an open dialogue between the Legion, the VA, and Congress is going to be critically important as we all share the same goal of honoring our nation's veterans. Since the American Legion was chartered uh, back in 1919, a couple years, this is going to be really a big event, your grassroots efforts have helped veterans and families in Montana and across this country, and I want to thank you for your commitment to serve your veter fellow veterans, their families, and our communities. But you know what? Saying thank you is not good enough. To properly honor our veterans like you and your families, Congress needs to follow your lead and ensure that our nation lives up to its commitment on behalf of those who have served. Today, I think we can all agree that the VA is at a crossroads. We're approaching the sunset date for the so-called choice program that while connecting a number, number of veterans to care, has often left a number of veterans, at least in Montana, with the choice of waiting longer for their care or not getting that care at all. Some have spoken openly about permanently extending this program in its current form or sending more VA resources into the private sector without boosting the capacity of the VA. In my opinion, that would be disastrous for veterans seeking care. Veterans have overwhelmingly told me that once they get in the door at the VA, they love the care. The problem has been getting in the door. As ranking member of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, you can be assured that I'm going to remain committed to improving access to timely and quality of care and benefits for you and your families. <clears throat> Together, I think we can acknowledge that the VA has made a great deal of progress in recent years on priorities such as connecting more veterans to care and reducing veterans' homelessness and the backlog of disability claims. But we can also acknowledge that the VA is confronted with looming and dramatic funding shortfalls, an unacceptable number of pending appeals, and a choice program that has failed to meet the needs of our veterans, those same veterans it was established to serve. With the choice program expiring in August, we have an opportunity to reform it to cut the program's red tape and bureaucracy that, so that veterans are connected to care more quickly and community providers are reimbursed in a more timely manner. We need to untangle the web of multiple community care programs and streamline access for veterans across this country, and Montana is no exception. Community care should be a seamless and efficient process that is easier for veterans to, uh, and providers to navigate in way too many instances. And at middlemen, the third party administrators are getting in the way. And it is past time for them to shape up or ship out. And I'll tell everyone gathered here that Congress must reform the choice program before I'm going to ex agree to extend it. On my farm, if something's broken, you fix it. It's that simple. 
So while we're reforming community care, we also need to ensure that the VA has the capacity to meet the evolving and long-term needs of our veterans. That's why I'm calling on Congress to approve the 24 pending leases for medical facilities across this country from Florida to California, and in fact, including one in Montana. We cannot serve veterans if we do not have the physical infrastructure. And these new facilities won't do any good without the medical staff and appropriate personnel to operate them. As I said before, all federal employees should be held accountable for their performance and their conduct. There is no question that the VA should deal swiftly with the employees who aren't delivering on the promise that we've made to our service members when they enlist. In those cases, folks need to be shown the door. But it is simply, it is not, it's simply not a choice of either standing with the veterans or with the VA employees, a third of which are veterans themselves. That is why I've been leading the charge to improve the VA's ability to recruit, hire, and retain top quality talent to our nations, to serve our nation's veterans. I'm currently working on legislation that would allow the VA to better compete with the private sector for leaders in healthcare industry to serve as medical center directors. In recent years, we have seen a vacancy as high as nearly 30% in those positions. If we want real reform and strong VA leadership across the country, this needs to change. We must also ensure that the VA is addressing the needs of all eligible veterans, regardless of where they live or who they are. Women veterans are the fastest growing veteran population and they continue to encounter unique barriers to care and benefits. I'm talking, talking about things as basic as privacy in, in, in their examination rooms and access to primary care providers. Women veterans have an unemployment rate nearly a full percentage higher than their male peers and they are three to four times more likely to experience homeless, homelessness than non-veteran women. But we know that women veterans are resilient. With the support they deserve, women veterans have higher household incomes and they're less likely to live in poverty than women who have never served. The VA must address the specific needs of women veterans and connect them with the benefits that they have earned. That is why today I'm going to announce that I have authored landmark legislation that will expand peer-to-peer -peer counseling opportunities for women veterans so that they will not fall through the cracks and transition and will get connected with the VA. The bill includes the creation of a secure text messaging service through the Women's Veterans Call Center and increased access to legal services for women to address needs like child support issues, restoring driver's license, and prevention of eviction and foreclosure. Additionally, the bill provides all individual facility directors the authority to partner with organizations to provide child care for veterans coming to the VA for treatment. My legislation will require the VA to eliminate barriers to access by ensuring it has the medical personnel, personnel to better meet the health care needs of women veterans and addressing issues that impact privacy and the environment of care, like locks on exam room doors. I'm rolling out this legislation to get your feedback so that we can work together to ensure that it works for your members and all of America's veterans. <clears throat> so please, please review the bill uh, and do get back to me with your feedback. I am particularly interested in your thoughts on the provisions that make the disability claims process more fair for survivors of military sexual trauma. We have made progress on the disability claims backlog, but it is no secret that the appeals process is archaic and in desperate need of reform. Over 450,000 veterans are still waiting in limbo for the benefits that they've earned. At least 80,000 of these folks have been in line for five years. Last year, a bipartisan and bicameral group of legislators introduced a bill that you supported to consolidate and streamline the VA's disability appeals process by establishing three specific and separate lanes for appeal. This means that a veteran who has new evidence doesn't have to start over, and a veteran without new evidence can go straight to adjudication. This legislation will soon be introduced, and we need to move it forward as quickly as possible. I've also recently introduced legislation, the Educational Development for Troops and Veterans Act, that make it easy for our service members and veterans to get the most out of their educational benefits. This legislation will ensure that colleges and universities are better able to create or expand vet centers on their campuses. 
It will also ensure that educational benefits for guardsmen and reservists don't lose value while the cost of higher education continues to rise. And that troops conducting pre-deployment training are able to, do, to defer their student loan payments so that they can focus on the task at hand. Tomorrow, the American Legion will be delivering its legislative priorities to the Senate and House Veterans Affairs Committees. I look forward to hearing directly from you about how to hold the VA accountable, improve access to timely and quality care, and ensure veterans and their families are provided with the benefits that they have earned. But moving forward, I have a request for each of you. Hold me and my congressional colleagues accountable. Be vocal, be relentless. Words have meaning, but they are hollow if they're not followed up by action. Holding the VA accountable is a priority of mine, but it's a two-way street. And I don't know about you, but I am really sick and tired of Congress shaking its fists at the VA without giving them the resources that they need. <clears throat> With that said, I pledge to each of you that I will continue to work hard on behalf of the veterans that I represent and on behalf of you. I want to thank you for your service and for everything that you do on behalf of fellow veterans and their families. I wish you all the best. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you, thank guys. you Senator.